Why won't your organization engage in peace talks with the Israelis? You don't mean exactly peace talks, you mean capitulation, surrendering. Why not just talk? I haven't seen any talk between a colonialist case and a national liberation movement. But despite this, why not talk? About what? Talk about the possibility of not fighting. Not fighting for what? Not fighting at all, no matter what for. People usually fight for something and they stop fighting for something. So you can't tell me even why should we speak about what? About stop fighting why? Talk to stop fighting to stop the death and the misery, the destruction, the pain. The misery and the destruction and the pain and the death of whom? Of Palestinians, of Israelis, of Arabs. Of the Palestinian people who are uprooted, thrown in the camps, living in starvation, killed for 20 years. They're better that way than dead though. Maybe to you, but to us, it's not to us to liberate our country, to have dignity, to have respect, to have our mere human rights is something as essential as life itself. Do you support the dismantling of Hamas? If Hamas has to be dismantled because of what it did on October 7th, then if you take Operation Cast Lead, Operation Pillar of Defense, Operation Protective Edge, then the Israeli government has to be dismantled 10 times yeah, I over. I follow you, but it's not really an answer to the oh, question. Oh, it is an answer to the no, question. Because it's called keeping a single standard. You want to talk about the 290 Israeli hostages? I say fine, but then let's talk about the 2,300,000 Thousand Gaza hostages. hostages. Gaza. Oh yes, Gaza. Hamas is closing the gates. I know that. Gaza is closed. Hamas is. Love to open ha the yeah, gates to kill okay. more Jews. Yes. Okay. I don't and, think. And now, and, I understand. Uh, I understand I, your point I'm of hypocrisy. Saying, I'm saying, but it's no. Still doesn't whether you I think Hamas should be. I will hold everyone to a single standard. So difficult to understand right. what's actually going on. There's so many pro-Israel people that put their head in the sand. They don't want to look at some of these atrocities and don't want to look at some of the videos that you sent me of soldiers mm -hmm. shooting mm -hmm. at people mm -hmm. that are not doing anything. Their whole argument is that it's all Hamas and their human shields. I mean, we looked through hundreds of hours of footage. The footage is harrowing and I didn't see one weapon. I didn't see one militant, not one weapon. It was literally people with slingshots throwing rocks at tanks. If it were a war between armies, all of these things that Israel has done are still documented war crimes and very grievous violations of international law, targeting and assassinations by Israeli snipers of disabled people, of children, medics. press and medics. Palestine has a right to defend itself. The UN Charter of 1978, they say that, you know, occupied peoples and besieged peoples have the right actually for armed self-defense and, and people going out there in peace with their bared chests holding flags and they're getting killed and, and sniped. It's abysmal and it needs to be stopped. You know, Piers, you made your reputation as opposing the invasion of Iraq. Well, yeah. I would ask you, journalist to journalist, how could you justify the interview you just gave to the head of US forces in that illegal occupation of Iraq that David Petraeus led? He was then the head of the CIA. Both of the individuals that you you have just had on this show deserve to be in The Hague tried for war crimes. I am not anything like them. I have not hurt a fly. Those two men have. Why are they given the respectability that you gave them with your interview? And why am I interrogated as if I am somehow someone that could hurt a human being? They want us effectively to take the side of the state of Israel. That I shall never do. Speaking for myself. And who exactly are they who are demanding of us to condemn Hamas? Let's be clear. These are the same people who look the other way when Israel, Israeli army soldiers, kill unarmed journalists. They kill nurses, doctors, children. They're the people who remember international law, remember the United Nations and its charter. They remember the Geneva Convention on war crimes only when the victims are Israeli. <laughs> Somehow, it escapes their mind. All these things, UN Charter, International Law, Geneva Convention, escapes from their mind when it's Palestinians. Jewish people are believers in God. When God sent us in exile, we're staying in exile. He was warning us not to go out of exile before the coming of Messiah. Is this a mainstream belief? Yes. And he was warning us with three oaths. Now, <laughs> Going out of exile is a rebellion against Almighty. It's simple. Like if you have a child, he's bad. You told him, stand in the corner for 10 minutes. He coming out. What means that? He's rebellious. Couldn't care less about, couldn't care less about you, about your punishment, and do whatever I want. The same thing. 
<clears throat> if God sent us in exile, we going out means rebellion against God. Believers in God cannot do such a thing. We know it's very comfortable to have your own country, but we are believers in God and we accept everything what God do. The Zionist people are atheists, so they say how long we will stay in exile. How many civilians are we allowed to watch die? Is a defenseless people getting pummeled from the air by one of the most sophisticated and powerful militaries on this planet? They have occupied Palestinian land in contravention of international law. They have blockaded Palestinian territory in contravention of international law. They have built and enlarged settlements in contravention of international law, enforced an apartheid system that strips Palestinians of the most basic civic and human rights. They have also targeted and killed and injured civilians on a mass scale for decades. And the response of the Western world at this time is what? Israel has a right to defend itself. Well, what exactly does that mean? Is that they can cut off food, that they can cut off the power, that they can cut off water, that they can enforce the displacement of over a million citizens in what has been described by NGOs and United Nations uh, reps on the ground as an open air prison. Hamas doesn't recognize the right of Israel to exist. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like the African National Congress and Nelson Mandela refusing to accept apartheid and recognize apartheid. I say that Israel, if it wants to be a genuine partner in any kind of peace, needs to destroy its whole ideology of Zionism. Zionism that makes other people goyim, who do not deserve to be in the Holy Land. That's the real problem. If even, Israel will embrace every people, you, including Palestinians, equally, human rights respected across the board, then I would challenge Hamas to change its charter and say we will acknowledge Israel. But until that time, I see no difference between Nelson Mandela and Hamas in refusing to accept apartheid or the Zionist Israeli state. It is glaring hypocrisy when you have Republicans on the other side of the aisle trying to create definitions and say Rashida wants to annihilate people when Max Miller himself went on TV and said we're turning Gaza into a parking lot and we want to annihilate Palestinians. Nobody condemned him on that side of the aisle. What is true here is that every single one of them has not acknowledged the fact that Palestinians are dying in the tens of thousands but we'll continue to say it is us who are not acknowledging humanity. Rashida will stand strong. General lady's and time has expired. The movement will continue for liberation until every single lady's time has expired. Has the right Ge to gentleman live. Gentlemen from in Maryland liberty. is recognized. When Ethiopian people were immigrated to Israel, Ethiopian Jews, women then report 2013. That's not like 50 years ago. They reported that they were given against their consent and without their knowledge contraceptive shots so they wouldn't reproduce because they are the wrong color. Israel is a racist, apartheid country that is projecting this shiny example of secularism and democracy for the people so people can accept whatever they do because they look at Palestinians as lesser people. This is the whole point. And I would like to quote Winston Churchill. He had a quote that say, I don't believe that we have made a great wrong to the Red Indians of America or the black people of Australia because they were replaced by a higher race, a stronger race, a more world wisely race. This is why Queen Rania is criticizing the West. This is why we here said like, where are your values? Because this is the crux of the problem. It's not Hamas. It's not Palestine. I quote, it is people looking at you. us as lesser human beings. It's all our fault. It's not all our fault, but when you send your military for six straight decades into other countries to bomb them, kill their children and women and innocent men, we weren't prop up dictators, you know that, yeah, you take responsibility for your actions and say, to the extent that that region That religion is, goes back a thousand years before our revolution. So I don't think we could take all the blame. I don't think we should. I think we should take a lot of it. And there's lots of bodies and corpses that have been piled up in the name of Christianity and Judaism. It's not recently. Have That's you heard of the occupation state. of the West Bank and, and Gaza for the last 50 years, motivated in part by extremist views of Judaism or the wars in Europe? Lots of religions, not just Islam, produced by a oh, liberal view <laughs> that all religions are alike because it makes you feel good. No, it makes you feel good true. to say our side is better. Those no, people it makes over you there feel are good to put violent. a crown on your head and say, I'm a good person. How do no, I prove you get that? To, you get to ignore the responsibility that your own government has for the violence and instability in the world by saying, look, it's that primitive religion over there that's to blame. إحنا ناس دكتور كبيرة. إن أكون مدرس. أصير مهندس ونعمل بلدنا. وإحنا من 
أدخل الجامعة يكون عندي أي بد يكون يوتيوبر أنا مثلا عندي سيارة رونالدو أنا بعرف ألعب كورة روح حط الكورة فرزي لعبة فيها عجل والله دكتورة؟ ليش حابة تصير دكتورة؟ عشان نعالج الناس ليش بدك تعالج الناس؟ عشان حد تصير طيار واسافر واحرر القدس واجيب الناس واخليها تروح على امريكيا وتسافر وتشم هوا كل شيء انا اكون مهندسه ليش؟ عشان الاحتلال اليهود لما يدخلوا البيوت اروح ابني البيوت وابني البلد واعمرها واشوف البلد على ايديا ان شاء الله تكون روعه أكون أميرة بأصير بين غيوم أو مدينة حلوة أو شوكولاتة مارشميلو نعيش أنا الأطفال غز بخير والقدس بدلا لنا وغز انتصرت ما ما إنه يخسفوا بيوت وبروش ويخافونا كده ويطلعوا ناس من بيوتهم يا رب كلنا كلنا نضل عايشين نرجع على الاقصى نرجع على ارضنا وديوننا وبيتنا مع بيت جدي القديم نشوف ايش في غاده ايش كمان؟ خلص هو في حلم غاده ان نرجع على الارض وكل واحد نرجع على ارضنا ونخلص Sir Zomlok, this guy lost six members of his family in an Israeli strike. And when he went on like some British news thing, the, the lady told him, it's like, we are very sorry for a personal fun. I'm sure you don't condemn the killing of Israeli civilians. What? There's another girl like called Yara uh, Eid. She was like on Sky News. Her was like crying, like I lost 30 members of my family. 17 of them are children. I lost my best friend. Like, and then what did you think would happen? With Forget about empathy. What I think a, a lot of people. What about manners? Well, I think you. Here we go again. You have to start from a place of humanity. You have yes. to look at what happened on October the 7th. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Believe me, Pierce. Believe me, Pierce. It's not really about that. There's a deep sentiment in the Middle East, in Arabs, that the West do not look at us as equal. And I ask Chad GBT, simple questions. Mm -hmm. Do Israelis deserve to be free? And you know what they tell me? Yes, Israelis deserve the right like any other people. And then I ask the same question. Do Palestinians deserve to be free? And you know what they tell me? It is complex. I am going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. And I want to speak to my prime minister, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu. I have voted for you because you have promised us peace and security. On the 7th of October, those son of bitches Hamas, they went into the fence that is regularly heavily guarded. Usually if there's like a dove that comes close to it, it will be shot. Those people went in and they went for six hours before IDF forces was deployed, killing our friends, our families. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, what are you doing with the money being given to you? You are carpet bombing Gaza with absolutely no regard to our hostages. I heard a rumor that you let that happen as an excuse to carpet bomb Gaza, so you push them into Sinai. And I didn't believe it. I said, not my prime minister. He can never do that. And then I watched an interview for Danny Ailon. He was your chief advisor. He was also the Israeli ambassador to the United States. And you know what he said? That the solution for those Palestinians is to go into a vast land of Sinai and live in tent cities temporarily, huh? temporarily, wink, wink, until we build Gaza again, and then we invite you back. Ah, you've seen this movie before the following 10 insights will summarize your life number one you were born in a cold prison it is your country your state number two you have to pay for the prison stay they call the prison fee taxes number three you have no say what will be done with the money but you have to pay number four to pay the money, you have to work. The prison encourages you to buy new shiny products so you feel better about your poor existence. Number five, 
Only a few prisoners have walked far enough to see the prison wall, reunite with others, find the walls, climb the walls every fucking day.